right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Laura Canfield Show, the Awaken to Happiness Now Global Series. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And my good friend, Lori Spagna, is back with us. I was, we've just been chatting and catching up. There's so much going on in all of our lives. So it's always so much fun to talk with her and find out what she's doing as well as uh, what, you know, what I'm doing and all that fun stuff. So Lori is back with us today. And we're going to be talking about your spiritual evolution and ascension through the 2020 Gateway. We're going to be talking about up-leveling your ascension timeline to your highest and most benevolent trajectory. And of course, we started talking before we went live. So basically, you know, whatever is coming up, right? So we're going to talk about all sorts of things. We always do some sort of activation or process. We usually take some live caller questions as well. So it's, you know, usually when Lori comes on the show, I says, I just let her, I just let her go. It's like, what do you want to do? Like, like, let's just do it, right? How much fun can we have? Um, so for those of you who don't know Lori, I'll just tell you a little bit about her. She is a best-selling author, speaker, spiritual teacher, ascension guide, multidimensional channel, intuitive animal communicator, and energy healer, light worker, visionary, and luminary who assists others to awaken to their alignment with their with the true divine source, which exists within each and every being, so that all beings can live their best life ever. And she's, you know, been with us, oh my goodness, since the very beginning, I'm sure, so many, many times. And as a spiritual teacher, visionary, light worker, star seed, intuitive, and healer who radically transformed her life after a series of near-death experiences while living in Maui, Lori now teaches about ascension and acts as a guide to awakening spiritually-minded animal lovers, light workers, star seeds, and way showers. So I'm so glad that Lori is back with us. And I know you have like all sorts of stories to tell and all sorts of info to give us because like your life is like completely changing all the time. You know, it seems like you're traveling around the country, you know, from one place to another and like having so much fun doing it. Like, oh my God, I love the pictures. I love the videos. Like, yay. <laughs> so I'm so glad you're here with us, Lori. Welcome back. Well, thank you for having me, Alara. I'm so happy to be with you. I'm happy to be with everyone today. Awesome. So, of course, like I said, we are going to probably take some questions. We're going to probably do some activations. And we're going to learn about all sorts of different things to do with Ascension, the 2020 Gateway. What are we, like, what's going on right now? I know we just had a full moon yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, you know, the whole COVID situation, <laughs> which is, like, ridiculous, but it is what it is. Hyperbole? Yeah. Yeah. Hyperbole etc. And um, we're not going to focus too much on that because I don't like to give it too much energy, right? Because it's just whatever. Um, but I do want to talk about, you know, Lori, there's so, so much, but I feel like right now we seem to all be in a midst of change, right? I was just telling how I just came back from Paris this morning, dropping off my daughter. She's starting her master's studies at, in Paris. So change is in the air for parents, students, teachers, and, but not just, not just that. It's also for all of us who have been like, I feel like we've just been waiting for something, you know, just, you know, like on hold and waiting, but maybe now it's time for us to like get moving. What do you think? Yeah, I do definitely get the waiting game energy. Um, there's a lot of waiting game energy and that that's, I, I use the word program a lot because Wow, source was just giving me guidance on where to begin, and I've already detoured from that. So <laughs> I'm a reminder to remember to say what was meant to come through, and I mm -hmm. have it. Um, you know, I use the word programs a lot because one of the things that I do that I love is to work with the dormant DNA and the uncoded DNA that's that's part of our makeup. What's happened is that humanity, the human race was originally designed by a creator, divine source creator, mm -hmm. that, that brought us out of what's called an original divine code or original divine blueprint, which is in the dormant DNA. And it's associated, really it was labeled as the Adam Cadman body, which is what the Bible refers to as Adam. Mm -hmm. And the Adam Cadman body is the original divine blueprint, or it's not exactly precisely the same thing as the original divine blueprint, but it's, they're, they're, they're linked in the DNA for the ideal and optimal state of perfection of our body being mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic, auric, et cetera, all levels and layers of our body being and our consciousness. And through our experience in the physical realm, 
we have as a human species been manipulated at least seven times by a negative alien race and even fallen angels and old Luciferian satanic programs, which we don't like to talk about. We like to carpet sweep that and pretend it didn't exist, especially as light workers. So we're repairing that. We're repairing that now and restoring ourselves to our original human design, which is the Adam Cadman body and other divine blueprints in our DNA that need to be activated. So when I use the word program to full circle to that, it's because I'm typically referring to some part of our, of our hybridization that happened in a negative or out of alignment with the divine way, although it was certainly allowed and permitted because the old paradigm was all about exploration, free will, expansion, diving into the dark, expanding you know, what we were unconscious of or what source uh, was not in a sense. And that included dark and shadow, negative, so to speak, aspects. So that was allowed and permitted in these programs now, which exist in our unconscious and our DNA, must be cleared and resolved or realigned with the divine. So why was I going in this direction was that the COVID experience is basically clarifying who is still programmed into the old paradigm and who has not liberated themselves and freed themselves into the new paradigm who's not up leveled and i don't mean this to be in a harsh way i i mean this in the most benevolent way we all have to choose of our own free will and accord um to dis decide that we're going to find our way out of this old matrix this old paradigm by resolving those areas of us where we've been unconsciously programmed or hybridized in a negative or harmful or detrimental way that is based in those old paradigm uh, programs that are fear-based. Fear and shame are, and guilt are some of the three major ones playing out right now. You're being shamed into mm -hmm. fear or guilt and saying you, but it's the collective, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to all catch ourselves and find our way out. And the willingness to conform to the masks is, is part of how, you know, we ourselves are choosing what's good and right and rightly aligned um, in a, from our own unique perspective. So everybody does have to make their right choice that's right for them as individuals. But I can only say that the idea, you know, just tune in for yourself on the idea of wearing a mask if it feels really benevolent and uplifting and good and right and divine for you, then it's right. But if it feels if it's conformity or, you know, got to find your way within yourself of what feels like the highest alignment to your own highest and most benevolent best timeline. And that's where source was lighting up. That kept that was tapping me in my consciousness, saying, "Don't forget this part." Mm -hmm. It was a part about your highest and most benevolent, best timeline. Now, let's say a word about timelines here. Timeline has nothing really to do with linear time, not really. A timeline, oh, something, and my cup. Sorry. No worries. A timeline is really more like a chosen set of experiences or type of experience, something you're going to experience or choose either consciously or unconsciously to experience. And so the timeline experience is more like, think of it like a wave. What wave are you going to ride and how are you going to experience that wave? Or what kind of journey are you going to have and how is that journey going to go for you? And you're, we're all creating that moment to moment. Most of us are creating it quite unconsciously. So your highest and most benevolent journey from moment to moment is what you ideally want. And that's always going to be a journey that's an ascension-based journey that's true, real, and organic, which means it's according to the divine plan mm -hmm. and is going to assist you, I'm saying you, but all of, I mean all of us, assist you in restoring yourself to your original Kat, Adam Cadman body or your original divine blueprint, which again are not exactly the same thing, but they're very close. 
and I can define the difference, but we do that in DNA calls and stuff. So the idea is, for the purpose of this discussion, so all you need to know is that your goal, your soul's evolution for being here at this time is designed to help you to evolve and ascend, to really find your way out of that matrix and the old third dimensional paradigm, which aren't exactly the same thing, by the way, but there's an overlap, of course, mm -hmm. and to elevate through an organic ascension timeline which is according to the original divine plan, which is going to be restoring you to your ideal and optimal state of health and well-being and to your highest and most benevolent journey or timeline experiences. So, and the journey has, you know, all kinds of experiences, timeline experiences. So if we can hold that if we, do we all understand this, what I've just said is a foundational principle for what's happening right now in an accelerated and highly um, amplified way to mm -hmm. show us through 2020. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Good. So you then have to decide in your mind to some degree or another what your highest timeline entails. Your high and remembering timeline is not just linear time it's experience after experience 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 this experience that experience what's your highest and most benevolent timeline entails it's obviously stuff we already know in our collective experience peace happiness joy love health well-being prosperity abundance but the overriding factor that will always get you on your highest timeline is that which is um, aligned with the divine that which is love and peace and joy base, which we just said, and that which is for the 100% positive upliftment of all beings with zero karmic debt. Zero karmic debt. The old paradigm recreates karmic debt. The new paradigm eliminates all karmic debt because it's for 100% upliftment of all. So you begin to Use your consciousness to evaluate your experiences on those fundamental factors, those fundamental truths, and anything that doesn't feel or somehow jive with that in an aligned way. Aligned is going to generally feel good, mm -hmm. optimistic, enthusiastic, positive, uplifting, inspirational, exciting, lovely, you know, yeah. benevolent. Uh, etc. You have to take the moment to evaluate it until you are complete with it and resolved. So this whole 2020 window is really about that. Does this make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And, and so I know that a lot of people are having a lot of awarenesses for themselves about, you know, about their life, about consciousness, about humanity and the collective and where we're going and where we where we're not going even right so lots you know this this has been a, a a really interesting teaching year for all of us as well yes yeah i mean it's just giving us experience effort after experience for us to choose what yeah. we're going to have what we're going to do and it's so um it really important to to evaluate things based on vibration mm -hmm. Because um, the vibrational factors are, are, are the, that is the new, our new currency. I did videos on this on my YouTube channel. Our new currency now, if you cannot already tell, is a currency of perspective. What you believe and perceive will create your reality. Mm -hmm. What perspective you buy into, your reality will conform to you. And that is your strongest currency, which is going to always come through mind-heart connection or misalignment. Mm -hmm. Anything that you're experiencing, and you see, this is where we were going before. This is the pivotal thing. This is like, this is the juice. You think, I'm saying you, but I mean all of us, that there's a pen out there in front of you. And that pen is straight. And this pen is gray. And we all think that we are all having that experience. And we consider this as absolute truth. Mm. And it is absolute truth for those of us who agree. But there might be someone over here who's sitting at a gamma frequency 
a whole different vibrational bandwidth who says, I can bend that pen. And everybody who's at a beta brainwave frequency who's been operating there will say, it's impossible to bend it. It'll, it just won't. But someone over here at a gamma brainwave frequency is saying, well, you're not at my frequency. And that is reality. Right. So yeah. most of humanity is hanging out in a beta brainwave frequency. You have a lot of new people waking up to more and more of an alpha brainwave where they're like, wow, I'm starting to get uplifted. I'm starting to realize there's other potentials. Wow, maybe the mask thing isn't so real. Then you have a lot of people at the theta brainwave frequency. That's my community and tribe. Mm -hmm. And we're like, we're, hang we're working on living here and also dipping in and hanging out more and more in gamma. But we know we can't live in gamma. But we live more and more in the theta frequency. And from this space, we say, ah, that pen's not a pen. It's only a pen if the universal law and the laws of nature dictate so, which at this frequency, it's true. Mm -hmm. But I know I can rise to a different frequency and bend it and change it and transform it. But I will respect it at all frequencies. Now, that's where I'm hanging out. And so the people who are hanging out at the other frequency bandwidths, they just don't know that they can change it. Right. And they don't understand because they believe the external narrative. The external narrative is that there is this deadly virus that can kill you and you better be afraid and you have to wear a mask and believe the external authorities because you've always trusted them and you have no one else to trust. That's the density. It gets even worse than that. Mm -hmm. I won't spend time there. Yeah, absolutely. Even when I talk about it, I can feel the heaviness. And, and, and the thing is, they just don't know. They right? don't know. They're not aware no. of, some, of right. something that, else being that's possible. What I say. It's because humanity has been so um, manipulated, mm -hmm. literally in the DNA, since the birth of humanity in this paradigm, since the, what we call the fall from grace, that in that process, that experience has really dumbed us down. Mm -hmm. And if we're not consciously reclaiming and reactivating that DNA and realigning with source through the healing journey and the consciousness journey um, and the ascension process, we can't see that the pen can bend. Mm -hmm. And it's not too late. It's not too late. That's why 2020 is amplifying everything and intensifying it so that those who haven't seen still can. Yeah, absolutely, it's not too late. Because it will not serve ascension for them to continually be lagging. It won't serve them either. So what happens then is if, I, got, I learned this from the law of polarity, which is a universal law. Now that's the one thing you gotta understand. You can't change an absolute truth. And in our reality, at least the reality of the physical, um, including the non-physical, at the sixth dimensional frequency, we have universal laws that govern the reality so that we can find our way out of this matrix, of this old paradigm. And those laws are unbreakable and unbendable until you completely harmonize with them go beyond them but why would you even want that to because they are so benevolent they are designed to support and assist us so when someone says they don't want to believe something that is real and true now they just become carpet sweepers and playing into the game of denial that mm -hmm. can be spiritual bypassing to me that's just i have no patience for that myself because the carpet sweepers of the world who were largely i think the generation before star seeds really started getting activated you know, they, they came in on, the, you know, on Woodstock, they started waking up like the early 60s. They were wonderful, but they, if that was good enough, we wouldn't be where we're at. We would have progressed by the 2012 timeline, which we were supposed to. So carpet sweeping and spiritual bypassing and denying and playing ignorant in the shadows does not get us out of the matrix. It just makes us repeat it until we're willing to face all of our own shadow aspects, which we must resolve 
and somehow integrate to mm -hmm. move beyond. So does that make sense? Is that helpful? Absolutely. Yep. All right. So I think I was going somewhere with that. I might've lost my <laughs> train with that. But um, the idea is that we do have to work with all of our own shadow aspects, including whatever that is. That's, oh, I know where I was going with that bifurcation. Thank you. So the law of polarity basically taught me this about how polarity works, which is a universal law to basically polarize and neutralize in the middle bandwidth that which is at opposing forces and so what the law of polarity taught me when i you know because again i've worked with these laws for so long i i've been learning from them for so long that they take our reality and begin to polarize that which is like opposing like magnets in a sense still connected but eventually it will fractal and what you end up having experience of is a fractalization a separation of reality so that in a sense one reality is extremely different from another reality or what happens is somehow a, a god being or we are god beings awakening you know we're not the god but we are aspect of that god we somehow find a way to integrate and neutralize either way even in the neutralization there's always something that can polarize from what's neutralized and those fractalizations which are part of they happen in like say sacred geometry they become unique paradigms of themselves or we could call it holographic experience or separate unique realities. Mm -hmm. So that's why somebody could be saying, the hospital's crazy. There's, there's people dying everywhere. There's blood everywhere. There's COVID everywhere. One person could be having that experience and it's real. And another person could be having an experience where they're like, nobody's in, I don't know what they're talking about. The yeah. hospital will come. Nobody's, nobody's even coming. Yeah. And that's why people in the lower paradigm don't understand this stuff because they don't know what to believe. But the 2020 gateway is showing them all possibilities to say, choose. Mm -hmm. What will you have? But you have to be vibrationally compatible with it. Yeah, so while you, you, polarity you is organizing this for us, it's saying, here's one extreme, here's another extreme, mm -hmm. here's the neutral. That's always going to give you your choice of what you want. When you're in the neutrality, you can clearly say, not that, that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you to that. No, thank you. That. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing. We have that power to choose. We can make that choice. But, right. you know, it does, be, it does come back to us raising our vibration, getting clear on who we are and what we want. What, what kind of experiences do we want, right? It's, and it's not just about... Um, you know, just using the conscious mind and saying, okay, I'm not choosing that. No, but vibrationally in your inner core, what are you feeling? You know, and, and that's the key. It's like, we might be saying words, but what is your energy behind it? Yes. Oh, that's a wonderful point. That's a wonderful point because our new paradigm, in our new paradigm, everything is energetics. I mean, it always was. It's just, we weren't conscious of that. That was one of the, that's one of the key things the animals teach us about energetics. That's their universal language is all animals. They speak a universal language of energy. So we are learning that the animals have been trying to teach us that for a long time. And the energetics will always be, you know, we've, we've said this already, you know, that which feels good, right, divine and aligned mm -hmm. is, is showing us the way. And that which feels um, out of alignment will be, generally speaking, a not that way sign. Oh, yeah. don't go that way. <laughs> yeah. So, it's, you know, so it's a matter of us starting to be aware, right? Choosing for ourselves and starting to be aware of what does feel good for us. What, it, what you know, what are we aligned with, right? Yes. And making that declaration and making that stand. Yes. Right. Yeah. And so that's why I think also what's one of the most challenging parts is I did a whole course on this, uh, about your power, your personal power, mm -hmm. what your power is and, um, how you give it away to others. And we tend to give our power away to like, you know, of course, external authority figures, 
we give our power away to our physical bodies in the sense of not working with them in harmony. Mm-hmm. If something's wrong, oh, suddenly something's wrong and there's a problem. And then we're giving our power away because we're not realizing like our body's working with us to communicate with us and to help us to resolve something perhaps or you know, mm-hmm. go in a million direction. But so we give our power away to also money, materialistic wealth and possession, of course. That's an easy one for us to see. And then we typically give our power away even to the divine, different aspects of the divine. In other words, we could give our power away to star family races. We could give our power away to angels. We could give our power away to a misleading, what we could call a false god. A false god also sometimes referred to as a sky god, some Santa Claus in the sky. Mm -hmm. That's That's not what it is in the new paradigm. So we have to reclaim all that in order to really elevate. And we can't reclaim that when we're so unconscious of it. This is the challenge that's going on because, you know, the only, I've been saying this for years, the only fake news is on controlled media. Mm -hmm. And we already know this. The mass media is controlled by the six richest corporations uh, in the world. And they, they control the banking system, all of the financial uh, the financial systems. They control the schooling and the educational systems. They certainly control big pharma, and that includes our medical institutions. They control the talking heads that you see, mm-hmm. mass media. They control the entertainment industry, and it's starting to be exposed. But if we're not willing to look at that and consider that that's part of the old paradigm and to see how it has served us, we certainly won't be able to break free from it because w- what keeps you stuck in the old paradigm aside from integration with fear is core ignorance and denial. Mm-hmm. Ignorance and denial will entrap us. And that's what I call, I lovingly refer to as carpet sweeping. And so that's why I think it's so relevant for us to come together in open forums like this where we can talk freely about it in a safe way that's not designed to keep us entrapped. It's designed to, to liberate us in a way that feels good and right. And again, we all get to use our own discernment. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And that's you know, the thing, it's, yeah. it's, it's good to be aware and then say, no, it's like, no, that, that does not work for me in my reality. That does not work for me anymore. Maybe it served us in the past, but now I'm aware of it and this, I don't like it. This, right. this does not follow me as I move forward. Right, because how can you possibly know if some figurehead on TV is lying to you if you don't understand that that's a controlled Yes. hierarchical top-down system of the matrix that's the top-down hierarchical patriarchal system of the matrix that was set up by a negative alien agenda that controlled this paradigm this matrix that we've all been in and that in order for us to liberate ourselves from it we must see it for what it was which was part of a paradigm that we all played with, learned, grew, and evolved from, and now we're done and complete with. And we can Mm -hmm. lovingly, lovingly bless it and be complete. And then we can build the bridge, which is what I'm doing here, and I know you're all doing here, Mm -hmm. do our best to build the bridge to assist others to come out. But we also recognize and honor their free will choice. If they choose not to see, believe, or agree, they don't have to. Yeah, exactly. You you don't have to believe that that stuff existed. You can deny that it existed. You can say that there's no, you know, you can call it a conspiracy. That's all fine. But if you're in the state of denial or refusal or entanglement with it, you will stay trapped in it until you somehow look at it and bless it with clear 2020 vision. Mm. 2020 vision you get to look at it and be like i see clearly and all is well i recognize it for its service i'm in my divine neutral now that's the most difficult and challenging part being in the divine neutral no yeah. question it's yeah. the most difficult and challenging part and i've been doing energy healing and energy work now for I mean, a long time, I, way, even before my professional career started, I was working as a Reiki master and a healer for many years before that. And 
I mean, I'm still working on bringing myself into more and more neutrality. I found myself entangled in something even last night and I thought, this just isn't feeling good. How am I entangled in this? Not, oh, I see, I was dancing at a lower frequency that was not matching my frequency. And I was playing in a, you know, in a pool where I don't belong. And it's not matching my frequency. It wasn't uplifting. It was pulling me down. Oh, okay. I send it all love, all participants, love and forgiveness and peace. And I extract myself from that experience lovingly. I bless them on their way. I realize that's not my right and appropriate place for my most benevolent journey. And that might have been a pattern or program from before, but you've outgrown that. You've, you've moved past that, but sometimes you, we will get little, little hits of it, you know, and then we get a little bit caught up, but we're quick enough that we can be aware. It's like, oh, what's happening here? And then pull ourselves out, right? Yeah, especially right now, because we're in the final now four months of 2020. And so, um, you know, we've got three, ma you know, major planets in retrograde, which I don't want to go into the whole planetary thing, but I would advise people go to my YouTube and watch one of my recent videos that said how your astrology is holding you back. I love astrology. Mm -hmm. And it's a wonderful indicator of the collective pulse because the planets are governed in the physical world on many levels and layers, just like we are all these. They're also, they're real and the astrology is real. But for those of us who move beyond sixth dimensional frequency, which for me, I'm living most of my life at a frequency beyond 60. I, I realize that the planets now are too limiting on that level for me. But nonetheless, for the collective, there's a wonderful, well, infinite wisdom on the, on the lower frequencies to help us navigate our way. And right now we have three major heavy hitter planets that are in retrograde still, Pluto, Saturn, and Jupiter. And that is making us review things. Mm -hmm. so when something's coming up in our field, that is, that's what I feel like happened for me last night. It was a review of old energy and it was like, oh, right. I already know this one. Just like you just said, Laura. So if you're having that show up in your life right now, where stuff that you thought you might've been done with came up again, or something that felt unresolved for you is coming up, or maybe something you thought you were resolved with, you know, that would make sense, right? And we always want to unpack stuff in the most divine way. You know, we want to unpack it and resolve it in a way that does no harm. That's very important. We're not trying because that will just entangle us and bring us back into the old web. I just keep, I think it's so funny, the conversation we're having and the image that's behind my head. I'm in a hotel room, if you haven't yeah. noticed. No, I did. Yeah. And that's just such a funny web in there. <laughs> Like, here I am, my brain is aware of it, and there's a light right in front of it. Like, mm -hmm. the I just think that's such a funny because we had this conversation once before about other images when one of our other calls that we did together, Alara. Do you remember yeah. that? We both had like these beautiful and, silver geometrical patterns, like the one that's behind your head. Yeah, and what's, and what's funny is like, it's not like we plan it, you know, it's like it just happens, but, but, but we're talking but about course, this. Like, Example yeah. of my reality. This matrix is behind me. The enlightenment is also about it is behind me. I'm outside of it or external to me. It's behind me. Yeah. It's hanging yeah, in it's a behind you. Picture. Exactly. It's behind it's you. Past. And here I am in front of, that's how I see it. <laughs> um, I was going to say really quickly, you know, you're talking about 2020 vision, right? We're in 2020. We're all having you know, we're reviewing our lives, we're reviewing where we are, we're reviewing what's going on with the collective and everything else. But personally, we're reviewing, where am I? What's going on with me? And what is showing up, right? So that 2020 vision is, it's about giving us clarity. So sometimes we might jump into like, the doubt and the fear and the like, and, and the and the like, why is this coming up? Like, like you just said, but it's giving you an awareness of where you know, your thought pattern still might be and where you need to move out of it and maybe where you need to like, okay, this doesn't work for me anymore. You get to choose, right? So I love how, you know, when stuff comes up for me, you know, it's like, oh, I love it because it shows me, it's like, oh, do, do, do I really want that? Nope. And mm -hmm. I'm done with that, you know? So it's like yeah. giving you that moment, awareness, that opportunity. Yeah. Every moment is awareness where you get to choose your experience to be what you want it to be. And otherwise it can be an opportunity 
for learning. But I, I am not of the belief system that the new paradigm is about learning. Um, not in the same way. The new paradigm is about creating, mm -hmm. creating something new and expanding into joy. The old paradigm was about learning. So now in the new paradigm, as we learn to live in the balance of the left brain, right brain, and the open heart, we can download any and all knowledge and wisdom that we choose. Once we're aligned with a frequency band with where that knowledge and wisdom is, so we don't have to learn a lesson. Mm -hmm. just, oh, if there's something out of alignment, we can download it into our consciousness and awaken it this is my work. This is what I do for a living with people and animals. I just activate all that higher consciousness that's available to us and clear any, you know, perceived energetic discordance, blockages, et cetera, in the field for people or animals so that you can just resolve it and then come into alignment. You don't have to learn and go through these hard lessons anymore. Mm -hmm. All knowledge and wisdom is available all the time. Everything we need is always available to us at the higher frequencies, not at the lower frequencies. They have to navigate their way up. I want to say something else about that too that feels really, really important. And um, those are the frequencies that are the major navigation frequencies that always sort of help us to navigate is the energies of divine grace, mm -hmm. which grace by definition, and this is how it was downloaded to me when I asked, because I didn't used to ask for grace, because I had this person, I, my personality belief was that grace meant slow. Hmm. And I didn't want grace then. <laughs> I yeah. finally had to realize like, what am I missing here about this grace? Because then somebody was telling me her perspective about it, that it's what comes after all the hardship. And I was like, I don't like that either. Who wants the hardship? Mm -hmm. That sucks. So I downloaded from consciousness and oh, light bulb changed my whole life. Grace is the absence of resistance. So when resistance comes up in your field, which is any form of judgment or condemnation or, you know, shame, blame, someone's, you know, struggling, you're struggling in some form, you call upon divine grace. And you, you can breathe in the energy of grace through your body vehicle. Breath is, mm -hmm. is what that helps you to connect with the higher frequencies. Very often learning to properly breathe and to um, infuse it through the body vehicle and, and fill up all your major chakra centers with it and all your energy centers and all parts of your body being. So the calling upon grace is what navigates you. The other really big experience I've noticed as I tend to steer my way away from others one of the things when I'm moving away from something that doesn't feel good is I'll recognize an absence of some form of gratitude or acceptance, either in myself or the other. Um, if it's another person or if it's an experience, I'll notice, wow, what's missing here is some form of acceptance or gratitude. And I will typically place gratitude there the energy of gratitude which you at any point you can call on the energy of gratitude you can call on the energy of acceptance because whenever we're entangled that's what's missing grace gets us through it but what needs to be put behind us typically when we're leaving something behind is a form of gratitude or acceptance that brings us into the divine neutrality so understanding those energies you can easily breathe in energy of grace, breathe in energy of gratitude, breathe in energy of acceptance. You can energetically place that energy there. This is all intuitive. This is all mm -hmm. psychic. And you place it there. You can place it at the feet of any person, place, or experience. You say, thank you. Thank you. I accept you for who you are. I accept you. Thank you for the lessons you've taught me, your experience. I, I, I wish you, and peace. I mean, you know, I used to put peace there all the time. And that's how I learned even if peace does, sometimes wasn't always enough. So I realized like what's missing here is gratitude. Oh, acceptance. So you can put that there behind you. That's what you want to leave in your wake. Mm, people aren't leaving in their wake when they're leaving anything other than peace, 
gratitude, acceptance, or some of these higher frequencies, they're trailing that behind them and it follows. It'll follow into their future experience. Does this make sense? Is mm -hmm. this helpful? Yeah. No. I think so. Definitely. And, yeah. the, and the thing is, it's as energy workers to understand that, you know, what yeah, and it, it's not about burning bridges, cutting off, you know, and so when you when you bless a person, place or thing with grace, with gratitude, with acceptance, it's like you're flowing much more easily to your new yeah. experience. Yeah. The burning of bridges. I have seen that in my life. And I will say, you know, like my birthday is a 29, 11 and nine is a number that can easily let go or not let go. And on my journey, I have learned about walking away mm -hmm. done. And what I've learned as I've ascended more and more is that that was a tool I used then. And now I have a better tool. I would rather put grace or, yeah. Uh, you know, acceptance or gratitude behind me rather than just done. Yeah. Yeah. That exactly. used, you know, and that, that is so symbolic of the, of that number 29. It's just always transforming its, its own release pattern and transformation. But anyway, yeah, we could do numbers too. We could spend an hour on numbers and numerology. Yes. We're not doing that today. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> people always want to know, tell me about my numbers. Like, no, we're not doing that. Um, all right, so does anybody have any questions about any of this that we've just talked about? Because this is huge, right? This is huge. This is a, a great way for you to start moving yourself in, you know, this is the third wave of ascension, right? This is how we move through ascension now, right? It's, it's not about struggle. It's not about learning. It's not about challenges, you know, but it is about choosing and, and choosing, you know, choosing grace, choosing gratitude, choosing acceptance. Yeah, and choosing it's from also, a higher vibration. Could say, loving, re lovingly releasing things that no longer serve us. I lovingly and willingly, I lovingly and willingly release this. I lovingly and willingly set this free. I lovingly and willingly give this up to the one true God of light of creation mm -hmm. to transform into the most benevolent best. I lovingly and willingly set this free. I mean, that is a really good affirmation to say about this old paradigm because, yeah, I mean, for me personally, I know in my journey, I, I can say I, I have absolutely no interest in playing with a lot of this old paradigm stuff. I'm not interested in, I don't have very much interest whatsoever about the argument and debate energy that goes on on earth, the divide and conquer mentality, the righteousness and the wrongness. I don't care about false authorities who are lying, deceiving and manipulating, but I do see it for what it is. I'm not interested in playing with games with masks or secrets or covert agendas, although I see them for what they are. I'm not interested in playing with viruses and the artificial information associated with it. I'm not interested in somebody trying to use technology to scan my eyes by blocking my face so that the technology can look at the eyes and read it. That's part of what's going on. That's part of the agenda. I'm not interested in that, but I know that it's there. And all I can do is consciously work on lovingly and willingly releasing that and knowing this is a huge part of what gets us to the higher frequencies is knowing that there really is a divine plan having faith and trust in a, div a divine source that is love you you do really this is where metal hits the road on that you know like do i really wholly and completely have within my knowing, knowing that there is a divine source of infinite love that is lovingly guiding and leading this whole game. And if any part of you is afraid of how the game is going to play out, most likely on an unconscious level, the answer to that question would be no. Mm -hmm. Think of how I, listen to how I asked the question. Do I wholly and completely know, have a knowing with my energetic body being, the totality of my consciousness, that there is a divine and loving source 
that is orchestrating and overseeing this process? If the answer is yes, you will not be afraid about masks or vaccines or artificial intelligence because you know that the divine will not allow that to play out in a harmful or detrimental way to the collective. So if you're afraid of those things, then you have to realign yourself and reprogram yourself. Um, I wouldn't use reprogram. I would mm -hmm. say realign yourself, deprogram yourself. Yeah. Awesome. This Thank is really you. where we get to reclaim our faith, hope, and trust in knowing that there is a true divine source of infinite love and infinite consciousness and infinite awareness, which is allowing this to work out in a most benevolent way for all and giving the greatest opportunity to those still trapped in the density to liberate themselves if they so choose. And while there still is a universal law uh, of intent, consent, and authority, which is a law of free will, that is still also governing the reality saying, if it's your choice to not elevate, that's okay. You can cycle and repeat until you make a new choice. And humanity does cycle and repeat the same things. This is a fun game. <laughs> Look at and, reality. And that's and, it. It is, it is a game. So you have to remember that, right? Well, the, the fun game I was going to say was look at reality and begin to just identify how it's a repeat from something from the past. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really got this when I was making peace with TSA. Years ago, I really did not like TSA. I really did not like that they were invading my body, that they could touch me, that they were forcing me to go through. I was in a lot of resistance. I knew that 9-11 was a secret covert attempt mm -hmm. to cover up and to the day that 9-11 went off, they were blowing up those towers because Nassara Jasara was supposed to be enacted, which we aren't, we didn't talk about that yet. And for other reasons too, I knew there were there was alien influence going on there that the government was trying to cover up. And I, I knew about all that stuff. And when you're, when you're a first wave light, wave light worker, as I am, you, you have to know what's going on. You have to know in order to serve. So humans weren't ready for that truth yet, but I knew that TSA was a byproduct of that. And I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. I had to make peace with TSA. But one of the things that really helped me in, resolving that was that source told me my consciousness activated within me sorry i'm hitting the table here um that many of the tsa workers are people who were either ex-nazis or involved in the kkk or various kinds of power struggle dynamics that they had to work through and that the TSA platform provided those individuals with an opportunity to resolve their power struggle dynamics in a way that was most benevolent for humanity. When that was revealed to me, I was like, I can be at peace with this. Wow. Because how benevolent is that for those souls to resolve those issues where maybe they were an ex-Nazi and they took someone's things that they weren't supposed to take. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they were... Uh, forced by someone who forced them to do something that they didn't feel right about. Or maybe they strip searched somebody or maybe they did something that now under a rightful authority that is a hierarchical structure that's more governed in a more benevolent way, they can work through that. Now, when that came to me, I was like, wow, what, what an epiphany, light bulb. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. And that's the awareness, that's right? I have a lot for that to be worked out. I made peace with TSA. I never had another problem with them for as long <laughs> as I, and I travel all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did some meditation too. I, I did, and this meditation is in the sacred, um, this meditation is in the sacred membership, which I know we'll talk about, mm -hmm. but, um, I did this incredible meditation that I, I use for everything and I give it to in my sacred membership and in most of my classes I give it because it's, it's incredible uh, wow, healing meditation where we can resolve our issues with like anyone and anything, including TSA. Awesome. <laughs> and believe me, you could resolve your issues with the concept of a COVID virus because mm -hmm. everything is just a form of consciousness. Yeah. So you could use that meditation for that. I mean, any relationship issue you have, power struggle issue, 
because we were talking about the ways we give our power away. And right. 2020 is largely about us reclaiming our divine power. So, I mean, that's part of what's getting us free from that matrix is reclaiming our divine power. And our true power comes through with and from and through our connection with our source and our willingness to, to align with that source. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that I was just referencing that meditation because it's off the charts fabulous. Awesome. Thank you. So there are some questions. Do you want to take some questions? I do. I, the only thing I ask with the questions is that we keep them in a way that serves the greater good of all and that we don't get so, you know, trapped in someone's personal storyline because I think that's, yep. you know, we don't that's ever it. have enough time to do that effectively. And then I always feel kind of bad because I either spend too much time on one person, don't get to everybody or else I think <laughs> I didn't give them enough time. <laughs> so I'm trying to get to everybody. So let's make it. A, but we're, uh, we're, we're definitely not going to get to everybody. I can tell you right now. Um, but I want to go to the phone line first because there's somebody with their hand raised, phone number ending in 909. So if you want to unmute yourself. Phone number ending in 909. Yeah, if you want to unmute yourself, that'd be great. If not, I'm going to go to the next person. I'm like, maybe they forgot. Maybe they don't know how. I'm not sure. But I can't unmute you. Oh, there you go. Hello. Hi. Hi, Hi, Alara and Lori. It's a pleasure to be on this call with both of you in this beautiful conversation. Awesome, great. And, uh, and one of the things which um, I'm enjoying the discussion, and I like to um, bring building the bridge for others as being a, uh, of interest to me. And certainly, have you had experience of dealing with business leaders and being a bridge maker? with business leaders and really dealing with topics such as power and control and sovereignty and so on and helping business leaders to navigate their way. Can you tell me what is your first name? It's Larry. Larry. Hi, Larry. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a solopreneur. I'm a small business entrepreneur. And so I haven't worked with like, I mean, I think we're all business leaders, but I think your question is more specifically about big corporation business leaders. Is that right, Larry? Part of it, yes. Um, I didn't really clarify, but I think what's coming through is being able to reach them and provide an open forum to get some of these things on the table and discussed. Yeah. And, to, and I think that... Um, that's speaking to me right now is finding a way in back into the corporate world and opening up discussions to really deal with what's really going on with you and having an open forum and having a uh, sacred space to them to get a lot of these things off of their chest and off of their, um, their history and so on to being able to free themselves up. <laughs> yes, I have Melchizedek here. I'm going to allow Melchizedek to come forward on this because I personally, while you were asking, felt that I was not up to answering your question. And I'm of the Melchizedek order, so I'm of the blessings, blessings family members of the Melchizedek order, allowing Melchizedek order to come through. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a rich and exciting question which has been posed to our group. This is a rich and exciting question, which, we, which it would be our great pleasure to share with you. Additional enlightenment, experience, and expansion for you as, as it is most relevant for those of you who are interacting, especially in this, this categorization, which has been known as the second wave, who are now inviting in the third wave, those business leaders you referred to. Here is our first and primary suggestion to you, and that would be that you recognize in all your engagement with them that you have no personal agenda other than to be of service. Therefore, you will be most free to speak freely and to encourage advancement in their consciousness on this topic area, these topic areas which you so richly desire to expand on, if you have no personal agenda, and if you are free and neutral of your own accord. So this is our first, our first direction, so to speak, uh, directive, which would be to, to expand on your willingness to be of service within, without 
any personal agenda. And we would expand and elaborate on this to say without any personal, uh, personal requirement or need. When you have a personal requirement or need, this would entangle you. So therefore, if you are perhaps an employee of an organization, your need would be for your paycheck and therefore you would have to conform. This would not create a, a, a perfect platform or an ideal platform uh, based in this first directive or, or direction, so to speak, which is to be as, as neutral in your own uh, agenda, to have you have no agenda of your own personal. That is number one. We hope this has been explained clearly. Number two, what we would also indicate is that you must perceive and realize that these business leaders that you are referring to already have a private agenda of their own. And their agenda typically is of a third dimensional consciousness that is somehow to make money, make a living, gain power, gain authority, gain financial growth, expand their offerings, their company, their directive, their... If you can understand when you meet with them what their agenda is and, and, and allow yourself to honor their agenda, to be willing to recognize their agenda without making it in any way wrong without trying to change it or get them to conform. You will meet them at a ground level, um, a bandwidth, so to speak, which will allow for the greatest forward momentum. These are the two initial directives we would provide to you. Of course, we could elaborate and go on. However, for now, we feel this is, this is service. This is suffice, uh, service enough to provide you insight which will allow you to further expand on your inquiry. We give you great honor and blessing as we recognize this question is great capacity to expand even into even greater. And we, we are grateful for such an inquiry and the opportunity to come forward at this time. Beautiful. Okay. That was awesome. And that I just want really to say- That was really awesome because when you were asking that question, I was like, gee, I, yeah, I don't really deal with big, huge business leaders. I'm just, a, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a light worker who, as a light worker and a star seed, um, big, big business doesn't typically uh, see me as relevant in their world. They see me as some kind of, like our people, they see us as kind of like, you know, woo woo. <laughs> That's what they see us as. Yeah. Are you, are you with me, Laura? Did we lose you? No, 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 sorry. I, I was hearing it's like this is gone now. Anyways, but I was just going to really quickly add too that the answer that they gave is not just for big business and corporate, but it's for other people who are asking about how do we talk to family members? How do we talk to friends? How do we talk to other people about, you know, what's going on? Right. And so it was great. Be neutral, have no agenda of your own, you know, come from a place of service and, you know, expansion and open to question. So that was a great, great question, Larry. Sorry. I'm very happy because um, I work with the Melchizedek Order on a weekly basis. On Sunday, we spend four hours. I work with a light worker group once a week. Every Thursday night, we've been doing this for years. And we do, like, we'll work with Enoch and Melchizedek and the Archangels. And we do planetary work. And we also do work for ourselves. And then... Once a month, we typically have like three nights in a row where we do this light worker work. This past Sunday, we spent four hours doing planetary light work. And I have to say, it was not so easy for me because I was in the Black Hills of South Dakota and I wanted to be off in nature, but yeah. I felt like I was called. I was called and I was asked to be there and I showed up in service, even though I wanted to be out in it you know, gallivanting in the Black Hills. I felt like, yeah, it's my vacation time, you know? <laughs> the four hours were on the phone and we were channeling this incredible energy, you know, rain, which now it's like raining everywhere. Mm -hmm. And my friend, like the next day, texted me and she's like, she lives in Arizona. And she's like, oh my God, there's rain coming to all the places we need most. I was like, nice reflection. But we also worked three, two things that came through the Melchizedek order. And some of those things were, really about um i just want to ask if it's all right yeah i mean it was divine will to work with disruption of 
some of these old systems and structures to further disrupt them that are n not working for universe for the divine uh, for the uh, in accordance to the true ascension plan and the divine will and when that was coming through we were like we just want to make sure this isn't our will that we're being of service anyway Melchizedek order I work with them all the time long story and that mm -hmm. was very cool that they showed up because I was not yeah no and there was a great answer I loved it so um here's a question from Deborah which is again a general question how can we connect with aspects of our multidimensional self to pull in our soul gifts or talent or success that we want in this timeline yeah i mean the short answer i would say deborah you already know and that is through meditation and sacred practice healing i mean i call it healing but that for some people might not use that word because the version of you that's already a multi-dimensional self and is already healed mm -hmm. so heal, but you're resolving your issues uh that your personality self sees as you separate so the healing journey the meditation journey working with healers and intuitives who are already there and have done it and active processing it is not a pill and this when somebody asks me a question that like is 20 years of work I'm always like, they have a take a pill program running. So you want to clear that from your unconscious because we've been wired as a system, as a society to think, take a pill in five minutes, everything is resolved. It's a discipled approach. You have to disciple yourself to a practice, an ongoing regular practice. And in the early stages, especially, and really through the whole thing, you want to be with always with um, somehow with people or groups or individual who will help you to continue, who you see as somewhat more advanced than you in terms of their journey. See, because at the highest levels, obviously, uh, at the purest frequencies, there's no one's more advanced. But on the journey, as we're all going, we're all at different mm -hmm. points and places in our journey. So put yourself around people. Who are already doing it and who are demonstrating that they've already done it and that they've been doing it so that you can learn from them and so that your vibration will be uplifted in their proximity so we're all holding our own unique vibratory frequency when we engage with those beings who are of a sort of denser vibratory frequency they are blessed to be near us but they will typically if we engage with them too much they tend to lower our free our base frequency when we put ourselves around beings who we perceive and we're uplifted by who are typically at a higher or lighter or purer based frequency relatively speaking we are uplifted by them and we all serve one another in this way no one is at the same exact vibrational frequency all the time mm -hmm. and so that's that's what i would recommend to you i hope that's helpful i know that doesn't answer everything in five minutes but i hope that makes sense Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Dave, he was asking, and this is, I think is a great general question as well. She, is, she says, I'm feeling down and stuck. Why is this? So oh, we're going to forget the person's name. Dave Key. Dave Key. Ved Key? <laughs> Dave Key. D oh, Dave Key. Yeah. Oh, I see her name. Yeah. Her. I I know Dave Key. Yeah. Her. Okay. Why is this? How can I release these feelings so that I can align to my higher self and raise my vibrations to create? And you were talking earlier about you know, to release lovingly and with ease, et cetera, what is not Yeah, I, mean, I would listen to some of the, re-listen to what we talked about. But the other thing is, you know, you're, all of our, that's a shadow. That's your shadow. You talk about, you have to go through your shadow, right? You're feeling down and stuck. Those are energies and beliefs and belief systems of being down and stuck. We've all been there. Nothing wrong with it when we judge it as wrong, when we resist it, we are now not in divine grace. We are in resistance, we're in judgment. Your shadow is looking for love. Down and stuck is energetic vibration looking to be resolved. So you want to let it go because you don't like the way it feels because you are the love and the peace that down and stuck is trying to integrate with and come home to. The moment you remember that you are the love, invited in, down and stuck, I welcome you home. 
into my heart. I will no longer judge you as wrong. I will no longer make you bad. I am the love you are looking for. Put your hands on your heart. Breathe it in. I will merge with you. I will invite you in. There is no wrongness of down and stuff. It was an experience. And it's an experience that you're fighting with right now. You're wrestling. And so what I'm inviting you to do is to invite it in. Invite it into your heart and know that you are not down and stuck. It's just an energy that you're judging is wrong or bad. And the more you recognize that you are the love that every single discordance is looking for, down and stuck is discordant energy, discordant consciousness. <sighs> Breathe it in, invite it in, stop fighting it, and know there is a law. Hold on. I'm just asking uh, the law if, I, if this is right for me to say. Yes. It's a law of destruction. Law of destruction is destructing things. There's a law of one, the law of one. Law of one is taking it all home. You're working with both in harmony in this moment. You don't have to know you're working with both. Law of destruction will destruct that energy as you bring it in to the law of one. Law of one, you are one divine being of love. Everything's coming home to love. I hope that's helpful. I know it will be helpful if you apply it. Yeah. Just don't expect it to happen in an instant. Don't be attached to the immediacy of it. Allow it to happen in the most divine way. That may take 30 days or 30 seconds. Yeah, be in allowance. And then Penny was asking about, I don't know if you want to have time or want to talk about Nisara. Yeah, let's, well, let's address this. So I have gone to Melchizedek on this quite a number of times. So I'll give a little story of what I know about Nasara Jasara, and you can certainly do the research on your own too. Um, first of all, it stands for National Economic Security and Reform Act. I think I have that right. Uh, the first initial national and the second or else Jasara is global. The original Nasara where it was originally written was part of the 13th Amendment in the United States. So if you're in a foreign country, it, it wouldn't, this Nisara would not, your Jasara is global, but in the United States, it was originally uh, written into the 13th Amendment, which the for-profit corporation of the United States, which is a for-profit corporation registered in Puerto Rico, which has no legal dominion over the United States under the constitution, that for-profit corporation, which is basically collapsing, uh, depending on what time, space, reality you're in, um, it, it, it tried to dissolve it. And the president that was trying to enact it was basically what it was saying was that we'll take taxes from people to support the war, the civil war. This was Abe Lincoln's timeline. And when we take these taxes from them, we'll create a debt, but we'll return that to them under the 13th Amendment. We will free them from all debt slavery. And when slavery is abolished, debt slavery will go away. And when the country unites and we're no longer divided, all debt enslavement will go away. That was the 13th Amendment. And because Abe Lincoln was trying to um, introduce that. He was murdered. We also saw that trying to be reenacted by John F. Kennedy, among other things. And when that was trying to be brought up, of course, he was murdered by the same corporocracy of this illegal for-profit corporation. So now that more and more people are coming into consciousness and we're able to tap into the quantum field and ask for divine intelligence, we're realizing that's still available to us. We want it. We want freedom and liberation from this financial global regime that has created enslavement over humanity. There are many light workers in the background who are very, very intelligent in financial matters who have been rewriting Nisara Jasara 
and putting it into play in the background without those of us, you know, knowing because it had so much of it had to be done for the greater good so that it couldn't be taken down by this old collapsing system, which has been lying and deceiving to humanity, you know, this corporation, this for-profit corporation, they've been reenact, re uh, creating it basically in a way that is more aligned with our current system, but still based on the fundamental values of this 13th amendment. And again, expanding it globally and it applies in different countries. So I'm, I'm not, I don't know the history as well in the other countries. That's why you can do your own research. This is just what I know and what I'm sharing. Now, on the lower time, this is where I asked Melchizedek about this. And when I asked Melchizedek for stuff, I'll like secure myself. No one else comes in and I'll work with a couple of my other trusted lightworker friends. Then we ask direct questions. So what we got was when that Jasara Nasara is real, it is not going to be available at the lower timelines because of that level at that density. It's just, it just doesn't, it's not cohesive there at the higher timelines. In other words, at the higher frequency bandwidths, it is available and will be made available. So this is, in other words, what that means is it's not going, not everybody will realize it. It depends at your consciousness. You see, if you're at a timeline reality where you believe a virus is going to kill you and you're living in a fear-based reality, it's not at that frequency bandwidth. I hope that makes sense. I mean, I realize this is very advanced information. Nonetheless, it's a very real phenomena. And so what Melchizedek said was, one of the most important things, Lori, that you can do to help humanity is just to help them become aware of it. So share what you know about Nasara Jasara from a place of inquiry, from a place of willingness, because we don't know all the facts yet. It hasn't fully rolled out, but there are people behind the scenes who are involved in bringing it out for humanity. And it is part of our future for those of us leveling up. And it not only means freedom from debt enslavement, it means a full restoration um, of all our financial aspects of trade and agreements, there's so much more to it. I wasn't necessarily prepared to address it today. And again, it's not my primary. Look it up. There's so much goodness in it. All about freedom and liberation from debt enslavement, freedom and liberation from income taxes, which income taxes have been, and this is in the Freedom of Information Act, so you can look this up too, were outlawed as illegal three times by the United States Supreme Court because the original constitution says you're allowed to tax luxuries, you're allowed to tax profits, of course, which we do when we buy things, sales, but income is not a luxury in our paradigm, not so far. And so it, under the constitution, it's illegal to tax income and all that income is going to these false authorities to support war and this whole divide and conquer programming. I mean, that's how they paid for war. That's how they paid for all the wars. That's how they pay for all their child mm -hmm. sex trafficking that's been going on, that's being cleared out. I could go on and on about this. So I cover this extensively in the Exiting the Matrix course, and it's covered very extensively in the Sacred Membership, which maybe we should talk about that now before we do the other questions. Let's, um, let's do that. So for yeah, those of you covered who- a lot right now. Right? Yeah, but let me just say one last thing about Nasara Jasara is that sure. just do your research on it because I am not proclaiming to be an expert in this area. I'm just a light worker doing my best to be of service to humanity. And I, my area of expertise is working with the non physical realm of divine beings and of divine infinite knowledge, taking that information, extracting it, and translating it in a way that we can use it and apply it in our lives. And also helping you know humans and animals to elevate. So, Nasara Jasara have not studied extensively. I don't know all the details, but you can do lots of research. It's lots of information, and yeah. overall, my guidance says help people become aware of it because it will be available as we choose it, and it is going to be available to us because more and more of us are going to re realize how freaking good it is for everybody collectively. So do your research, yeah. Google it, you know, Learn just about it. Start, start reading. Use discernment. use discernment because when people start talking pie in the sky stuff, you know, you know, it's, it's what I understand is it's, it is real and true. So just really quickly, because you mentioned discernment and somebody had a question about 
discernment. Um, what are your recommendations to develop discernment around the source of energetic information? Just really quickly. I know it's a big, it's a really a big quick question. question. <laughs> things asking me a quick question. <laughs> I know that's not a quick question at all. I know. Uh, let me just say discernment is an extremely advanced level learning. You don't, you don't develop it at your early stages. I don't think in mm -hmm. the early stages, you don't know what's true. Yeah. You don't know what's real. I mean, just look at the lower frequencies. They don't know what's real and what's true. They don't know who to trust. The first stages of developing discernment is, is it light and uplifting and positive? Overall, is it love based? Overall, because you understand in order to lift up, you still have to get through your shadow. That means there's still going to be some density there. Mm -hmm. Or is it bringing me down into fear? If it's bringing you down into fear, which everything on your mainstream, lamestream media is, by the way, because it's controlled propaganda, that is not designed to uplift and uplevel you. That's designed to keep you trapped in the matrix. So mm -hmm. that's the earliest signs of discernment is is it uplifting, expansive, educating, enlightening, exciting, optimistic? Is it bringing me into some higher state of consciousness, awareness, energetic frequency? Or is it really weighing me down and bringing me down? If it's weighing you down and bringing you down, remember the tools we talked about. Bless it, love it, offer it some form of gratitude and appreciation and acceptance, and then generally move away. If you're in a struggle, there's some kind of learning or lesson that's involved, right? That's the basic level of discernment. Now, when you get to the higher frequencies, like mid-range, you got to learn. Muscle testing is a great way. Kinesiology. I teach that in every one of my classes and every one of my workshops. I teach it all the time. Mm -hmm. It's a great tool in the early stages or the mid stages of developing more discernment because you start using your own inner muscle awareness and your own body vehicle, pendulums, rods, et cetera, for muscle testing or some form of um, dowsing. Mm -hmm. That is a tool of discernment to helps you really know as you develop it. Then when you get even to the higher levels, you start working with your own, as you more and more unify with your own higher self, inner self, source self, and your own guidance as you develop your ability to follow your own guidance and know what your guidance is. And you're developing that more and more. And it goes on from there. Discernment. I mean, it's, it's an advanced level learning yes but that was a great answer so thank you yeah <laughs> you're on the spot um all right so for those of you who are on the live page you can just click on the special offer button and those of you who are not you can go to alara.at for slash show for slash laurie nine and so um laurie's going to talk a little bit about the membership and just remember to when you do purchase please use the code awaken in order to get the discount otherwise you won't just saying. Yeah. So the membership is a living library. When I say a living library, it's because I'm always uploading new content in there. It's, uh, it's literally a, it is like a living library of, it's like YouTube with um, Prime and Hulu all combined. <laughs> and yeah. audible and audible and and amazon's book club so you got pdfs in there and videos and the audios for people and animals there are activations dna activations mini courses there's a whole entire course on the secret energy of money the spiritual laws of wealth including a whole ebook there's an entire course in there about timelines, dimensions, portals, gateways, and navigating your way through them. There is, there's a lot of, there's a whole course on the universal laws, which to me, you gotta know those and you gotta know how they work. There are countless energy healing activations for people, for animals. There's a mini course on the acoustic records. There's a mini course on sacred contracts and archetypes archetypical patterns which you can see those are really playing out there's a whole a whole course on numerology in there there are i said dna activations there are countless meditations so many fabulous meditations coming into alignment with your own higher self learning how to do 
breath work. There are two Taurus activations and meditations and I mean, sacred geometry, mini courses, healings and activations. There's a lot. There's so much that you we can have a whole year active. There's stuff on astral travel. There's stuff on developing your psychic intuition, your intuitive abilities. Obviously, there's tons of stuff on animal communication and telepathy, since that's such a huge part of my work and you know where my background started. Um, tons of stuff on activating your DNA and this, the key codes in your DNA. I mean, there's the there's a whole mini course on um, the star family races and also the you know the stuff we talked about with exiting the matrix and and there's a whole course on clearing entities demonics stuff that they it's, it's like this it's not about fear it's about realizing how much power you have to, to to not be stuck in any of that none of it's based in fear it's all based in clearing stuff out and resolving stuff and reclaiming your alignment with the divine tons of stuff on um just healing stuff and claiming your sovereignty and mm -hmm. um, yeah, working with the sacred geometries and it is a full, uh, and the Akashic records, there's a little mini course in there. You'll learn how to access your records. You'll learn how to get into a theta brainwave. You will learn, not only learn, you'll have practices for it. I just did three new practices that I'm adding in there about, um, I did them for my intuitive development class about working with um, a, a, a just one of my favorite practices, working with the crystals, the crystal, how to activate with the crystals, how to communicate with the crystals, how to use the crystals for your own clairvoyance, clairaudience, how to develop your clairs. Um, it is just a living library. And as long as you go in there like, okay, this is like YouTube, Hulu, Prime, Amazon Prime, you know, Audible, all like in there, you won't get overwhelmed. It's huge. And you will have access to it for a full year. And of course, you can download them. I mean, you can, there's PDFs in there, class tutorials, workshops, mini workshops, tons of stuff. Yeah, the ebook, the Secret Energy to Money class alone, that class alone. When I offered it, the class alone costs more than today's rate of what we're offering it at. So the class alone, that, that, that class, that secret energy of money and the spiritual laws of wealth, the reason I put it in there is because that I loved teaching the class and I did it because people, um, you know, it's helpful and relevant for people, but it's not my area of expertise. When I say it's not my area of expertise, I'm not a millionaire. I'm not trying to be a millionaire. I don't care about that stuff. I care about freedom and alignment with source. I'm a spiritual teacher. So I just took the spiritual truths about abundance and prosperity and put them in there, created that class, loved teaching it, did all kinds of healing and downloads in the class. And then I thought, I just want to give this to people. I don't want to try to market it and sell it. And that's in the whole class was worth, was originally priced at 600 bucks. Mm -hmm. It's in there. So anyway, I guess uh, I could go on about this, but I think it's really about the results you'll experience because what will happen is when you get in there, as you work with the content in there, as you use the meditations, whether it's sleeping or morning time or lunchtime, as you listen to it, you could be multitasking around the house, you know, cooking dinner or cleaning your house. That's how I, whenever I'm listening to stuff like that, that's, you know, at my own time and pace, I don't have to tune into like, this is a live call, but mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I do when I want to listen to something that I don't know about. I'm just will be multitasking or else if it's a meditation, I'll do it at morning time or nighttime or lunchtime at a time that feels right and appropriate. You do it at your own schedule in your own time. You have just access whenever you want. Um, so, I mean, you'll just be the results that you, that you'll have. is just a very fast acceleration. So if you can understand the content we covered today, in my experience, what I think I'm delivering here today, what I think's come through today is very advanced in my perspective. I don't, you know, this isn't stuff you find, you, do, you will get numerology in there, but this is stuff that's in there is, is going to accelerate you very quickly because it's, 
very progressive. It's not like stuff that's been around forever. Like numerology has been around for eternity. And I love numerology. I use it. There's a class in there, full class. But the, the full membership is way more encompassing. And, and that's what that's it's about for, for, for those of you who are wanting to, you know, have more awareness, gain more awareness, raise your consciousness, raise your vibration, learn about new things that you have heard little snippets about, you know, then all of that information and more is there, plus all the activations, plus all the meditations. So this really is about also doing, you know, your own work, right? So yeah. we do it's, have to be responsible. Tools. It's tools that you'll be able to use and apply in all of the areas of your life to navigate your reality and to choose your, to help you choose your highest timeline. It's the tools that you're, that you're basically looking for. Um, the, the thing I didn't say is that it's normally priced at 444. Yeah. And we're doing a 50%. Um, it, it, 50 no, with, the, with the awaken code, you, you get $144 off. So it ends up being 300. Wait, no, that's not it. They get it. Is, is that I what know, it, that is what it is? I talked to your assistant. <laughs> she said that's what I, I said. I because I said to her, so that's not fifty percent. She goes, no, that's what we've always done. It's like okay. So. Oh God. <laughs> I want to see. I'm just going to test it because okay. I thought what we were giving was for a rate of one forty four, or that it was more than fifty percent off. We can always change it. <laughs> I have no problem changing the code. Oh, I'm going to look up the code. <laughs> but yes. I, Hold on. Let me just go, go to codes. Let me see what I have to look at my codes. Okay. Just oh, wait, second, folks. Is the code. Mm -hmm. And the code, it's all capitals awaken. You put it in at checkout. Mm -hmm. I, I tested it. And it's on the sacred membership. Yeah. Hold on. I love this right in the moment. <laughs> I'm sorry. I because I had my tech guy do it. Yeah. No, I, I sent her a screenshot and uh, of it and exactly what it said and did. But she said that's the way you've always done it. And it's like, mm, okay. I thought it was the rate was for 144. It's 144 off. It's a discount, 144 off. All right. Well, I can't. I, for some reason, I'm being challenged in this area. So if it's 144 off, I thought the rate was for 144. That would be awesome. But that's, you know, that's. You tested it? I did, yeah. And it's 144 off. All right. That's, yeah. That's when I emailed her. I said, this right. doesn't work. This is what I got. I have a feeling my tech person may have misunderstood my intention when I said, the code and I did not catch it. I'm not blaming it on him, but yeah. I know my intention was to give it at a rate of 144. Nice. So just you know that might but still if happen. 144 you know. off. I'm gonna leave it at that. It's fine. That's the way. <laughs> it well, I think that's what I think that's what it was before. That's what she said. So it's like okay. But either way, I mean the thing is 444. Either way, it's still a deal. Like, it's a huge yeah. deal. Yeah. You know, it's a huge deal. So it's like. I'm that's okay. a kind of funny. That's one of those things I, I'm like, how could that have, how could I have done that mistake? Like that's a mistake. I don't know. But I'm sorry. I think 144 would be too little, too less, too you know. But, yeah, you I know. thought it was to be 50 percent off is what it was. <laughs> anyway, you know what? It is what it is. It's it still is what it is. It's no, it's a fabulous deal. It's We're a fa 33 rate. Sorry. Four forty four rate. Yeah. Oh, exactly. you know what it is? Okay, now I know where my mis my mistake even in the talking. The retail rate is 444. That's the retail rate. Yes. The online rate is 333. Oh, okay. Right? Is that right? The awaken code gives oh, you 300. It gives it to them at 300. Is that what it is? So you save 144. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's all good. It's good. I mean, it's still a fabulous deal. You know, like it's really good. Still save 144. I thought it was supposed to be 144 rate, but he did it save 144. And either I miscommunicated or. No, I, I think it's fine. It's just I don't set the codes. I tell them what to do. And I. Yeah, no, I think it's fine. Understood. I don't know. Either way, there it is. That's what it's supposed to be. 
Yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> it's all still good. Like savings and the library itself is a lifetime. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. It's like the amount of wisdom, activations, meditations, everything that's in there, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing. You know, it's like No, fantastic. I have had so many people renew that. They come back and they're like, they want, they want more because we're always adding more in. Yeah. So yeah. they come back and they want more. There's a really inexpensive renewal rate that we offer to people if they want to renew it because I just keep updating it and I have more to update. I was... Exactly, because you're always you're always doing more. You're always sharing more. You're always creating more. You're you know you're it's constant, right? So it's always being updated. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right. So was there anything else that you wanted to do with us today, Lori? Um. Well, we could do a really quick kind of meditation if we want. Sure. Do you want to do that? How how is everybody with that? Let's do a quick one. What I would like to do. If yeah. I would, yeah, let's do, I mean, we'll just make it, um, let me just ask guidance. Let me just ask. I'm hearing that people do want it. <laughs> and let's just drop into the heart center. Take some breaths if you want to participate. Long, slow, deep, relaxing breaths, big breaths. Let your eyes close and identify, sense, and feel the breath as you breathe it in, call in the energy, frequency, vibration of divine grace. So breathe divine grace into your body being, knowing that there's no perfect right or wrong way to do it. Become consciously aware of how you feel as you breathe in divine grace. Exhale whatever needs to relax and release. And as you breathe in the divine grace, notice how your body begins to come into homeostasis right away. Breath relaxes the body. This is why masks that block our oxygen flow do not relax the body. Breathing in oxygen and the energy of divine grace relaxes and puts at ease whatever has been perhaps not at ease, brings in ease and grace. As you're noticing your body relaxing into the grace that you're breathing in, notice anywhere that needs extra attention, breathe that in as well. And feel that energy come through the next breath that's good and relaxing and expansive for you. Drop all the way down through your core pillar, which is the major energy centers of the body. Just really your core pillar, your core. Breathe it all the way down, drop it down into Gaia. No way to do it right or wrong. Open up and activate the base chakra. That's about a foot below your feet. There's no way to do it perfect or wrong. Just mentally intend it and allow it. Breathe and notice. Feel, sense, see, whatever you do. Immediately allow divine source, creator God, as it is commanded here now, to encircle you in pure and perfect gold. All beings now. Higher selves operational. Nothing for you to do. Allow it. And then encircle you in pure, perfect platinum. Nothing for you to do. Allow. High self is responding to the command. And pure, perfect crystalline. Crystalline realm allows it and ensures it. Let it be. Noticing that connection with Gaia. Realizing you're in your own perfect container now. Still breathing and relaxing and dropping into the heart, dropping into the core, allowing yourself to notice how neutral you can be in a space of divine neutrality. If you're not neutral, if you're not relaxed, breathe in some more divine grace. Direct the energy of the divine grace with your mental awareness to any part of your body being that wants and or needs it. Allow it in. Relax out in the exhale. Relax and release. Divine grace flows in and through you. Divine grace infuses your body being vehicle. Divine grace goes straight through your core pillar down into Gaia. And Gaia greets your grace with her divine grace and returns it 
and amplifies it, anchors it in and through your body being, and further activates it, provides even more divine grace. Notice whatever you notice and allow. And from the space of divine grace, we're going to allow and command for three things. And I don't even know what they are in a moment. One is for the restoration. For the full and complete, words are being given to me, Melchizedek order. Full and complete restoration of divine grace and divine neutrality for all of humanity. Breathe in divine neutrality. The full and complete restoration of freedom, true freedom with and from divine source consciousness, truth, point of view, perspective, understanding, and different definition provided to the whole of humanity now. Breathe, receive, consent, and allow nothing to do. Our collective is making it so. So divine grace, divine neutrality, and true freedom being restored to the whole of humanity. Allow it, breathe it, notice, give consent, your breath, your awareness, your willingness. You can say the words yes. You can think the word yes. You can breathe, receive, consent, and allow. Notice if anything's releasing or moving, that's fine. Allow the divine to do its work. And so it is. This is done. Giving gifts to humanity here. Second, for the animals. The restoration and full acknowledgement that all animals, including the human species and the non-human species of earthly animals, known as your animal kingdom on earth, are now recognized as fully sentient beings with equal rights of sentience, freedom, humane treatment, kindness, compassion, ethical and humane treatment, freedom and liberation under the laws of the universe, love and peace, honor and dignity, respect and loving kindness. All animals, including humans and including earthbound human animals, now receiving these gifts, instilling within the whole of humanity's consciousness with your consent, breathe, Receive, consent, and allow. We are anchoring this into the physical world. Allow it now. Let it in. Breathe it. Let it happen in ways that are good, right, divine, divinely aligned, most benevolent, for the 100% positive upliftment of all. Notice as you breathe. Anchoring it into the physical world. Dropping down into Gaia below the base. Nothing to do in particular. In other words, nothing to do particularly right or wrong. Just allowing, noticing, breathing, giving consent. Lots of happy cows now <laughs> saying thank you. The cows have been asking. <laughs> I did. Traveling through the Dakotas, they were asking, and so it is. Third piece. I'm listening. I don't know what it is yet. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Melchizedek has spoken. Melchizedek order. This is what they're offering. The complete and total eradication and removal of those in positions of power who would deliberately and or consciously of their conscious intention seek, deliberately and consciously seek to cause harm and or engage in crimes against humanity, the full and complete removal of them from positions of power and authority. If 
and whomever they are who have been engaging in the deliberate conscious and deliberate intention to engage in and or participate in crimes against humanity and or seeking to cause deliberate harm to humanity on a global scale. Removal of these people from positions of power and authority now in the most benevolent ways possible and with the maximum amount of expedience, benevolence and grace, according to the divine plan. If you're willing, this is the business of light workers. This is what we do. Breathe and allow. You simply give your consent. If you don't consent, you can say no thank you. You can step out. This is the business of light workers. As we are directly, divinely, directly, divinely guided, this is what's been provided here. Notice, breathe. This is the service we do for humanity. Notice and allow. Okay. Melchizedek says one final piece, and this is a blessing for all those participating today, that all beings who have participated and shared in this service and contribution for the betterment of humanity shall now be uplifted by your own divine grace, uplifted and elevated to the next higher frequency quotients, the next higher frequency alignment, which is for your most benevolent best, the highest and most benevolent best interests of all beings concerned with zero harm and zero detriment to anyone and zero karmic debt. With your willingness now, allow it to be so. The divine grace of this group, the divine service and contribution that you have provided now shall be bestowed upon each and every one of you with your consent. Breathe, receive, consent, and allow if you so choose. This is a blessing and upliftment for all. Should feel good and right to you. Does feel good and right. Nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now remembering with these breaths before we come out of this meditation, reminding and reenacting, reenacting as it has been, it has been and has continued to be so, you are fully encased in your energy field of pure perfect divine gold, which is also fully encased in your energy field of pure, perfect divine platinum, which is also fully encased in your energy field, your energy field and pure, perfect divine crystalline, which is all fully infused with the energies, the frequencies and the vibrations of divine grace. One final long, slow, deep, relaxing breath of divine grace. And when you're ready, come back fully present and open your eyes knowing it is so, and so it is. How are we doing? Good. Oh my goodness. That was, that was a lot. It was, I was like sweating, you know, that was sweating, detoxifying. Yeah. It was awesome. amazing. It's, um, I think we all needed that for sure. You know, um, something that I think we should listen to again and again and again, you know, <laughs> thank goodness for replays. Yes, yes, exactly. No, that was perfect. It was, I think it was uh, needed. So needed. I just want to take a moment and say hello, especially to some of the people that I really know. Mm -hmm. Carrie, Carrie, who I believe was on our crystal retreat. Hello, blessings. And I do know, I know some of your other names. I just want to say thank you guys for being here. Yeah, no, that was that was good. <laughs> I love divine grace. It's like we can just call it in, and it's like it just started to burn up stuff, you know, that was there. It was like just amazing. What a wonderful group we have! Such high vibe beings. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, we it were good. able to do that. I mean, 
you know, when the collective comes together like this, in, in this kind of a group, we can just, we can do amazing things for humanity. And that's the thing, that's what we do as light workers when we're together, we're raising the vibration when we're having these conversations, when we're doing these meditations or activations together, we're, we're elevating consciousness on the planet, we're elevating humanity. This is what we as light workers do. Somebody asked a question about light workers earlier, but this is, this is what we do. Um, yeah, there's a whole class in there about light workers and star family races and the indigo family tribes, by the way. Yeah. in that uh, sacred membership. I mean, there's a whole course in there. And I mean, I do a lot of free offerings on that stuff, but the membership goes much deeper than the free offerings. So again, the membership is available at alara.at forward slash show forward slash Lori nine and make sure you use the code AWAKEN to, in order to get the discount, okay? So Alara, use... will you put the um, link I... in the chat box too? Put the yes. link in that? I did, and then... I did earlier, but. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But it, it it goes with all my emails and everything else, you know. So oh, good. Like, yeah, and then you okay. can put the code in there too. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. when you do the replays, it, it shows up on the chats. What? Yeah, oh. the replay, the chats are in there, aren't they? I mean, when no. I zoom, it, the chats go in. No, no. Okay, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong, but I no, it's okay. Because I, I know I've looked at them afterwards. Later, I'd be like, I I, I get the comments. Yeah, that I so. Made. Yeah, exactly. So I keep the I keep all that, but it doesn't go on the Zoom oh. replay. Yeah, okay. it's it just you know depends. Um, but it. no, that was awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you know, for all of you, I know we 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 can't get to all the questions, and we didn't get to all the questions. But I really you know appreciate all of the questions that we did get to. You know, and um, there was wisdom, and there was wisdom for each for each person if you're willing to look at it, right? So if you're willing to receive it. That there was wisdom there for you the answer was there for you but yes absolutely there's you know a lot of times you can't expect a quick fix like this sometimes we do need to go through the work you know we need to raise our vibration we need to like let, let go of stuff that we've been holding on to we, you know all that kind of stuff it takes time it takes practice i'm sorry ron we're not taking any more questions right now i just want to say to justine thank you for acknowledging lord Melchizedek in the Melchizedek order because i just I'm even learning from my divine team, you know, for years, especially in my earlier parts of my years of learning, I used to get quite frustrated with the non-physical realm and my team, especially the monkeys dicks would call me like a divine brat in the most loving way. And I mean, I can understand my, myself. I have compassion for myself because I was in the early journey, I was navigating unknown territory, which mo I didn't, wasn't learning stuff in the book. I was learning it direct and I would get frustrated. And I just realized how much, um, how much now that I am so often in higher frequency, but still interacting with everyday humans, I know that gratitude is the foods or the substance that those beings work on. And I know that's, for me, that's so important. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do feel like us light workers, we have done so much, especially first waivers. We've gone through so much muck and shadow. We've taken a huge amount of heat from unknowing, sometimes ignorant people who don't know what we're doing here and how hard we're working for the collective. And now it's so much more graceful in the higher realms, but it wasn't so always so graceful or easy it's been mm -hmm. challenging and the gratitude is huge and i know like my team has said to me you know be in a state of gratitude instead of a state of frustration Lori. that's their guidance to me but i'm frustrated <laughs> sometimes i forget that i mean not so much anymore but yeah early phases and so that was really nice of you destine to say thank you to Melchizedek because they served us well, Monkey's Deck Order, and we're grateful. We're grateful. Yeah. I'm grateful. So Ron is saying that when you when you called in the third part of the the piece that you were doing, um, his internet blew out. And so he really was disconnected because it because that whole process was so powerful. Right? Mm -hmm. That whole process was so powerful. I was like I was like sweating, you know, I was like, oh my goodness, I had to keep moving my <laughs> shawl. It's like I'm like sweating. Because it, because it was it was so you know intense so yeah and I totally get it Ron it was go back and watch it or listen to it again you know 
And well, that's um, the, beauty, the beauty of it. You understand we're working with energies that are not limited time or space. So even when you listen in replay, the energies will still be. Yeah. Wonderfully. We'll still be there. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, you know, speaking awesome. of gratitude, you know, again, you know, like we are also grateful that, you know, you're back, you know, with us on the show and shared so much, not just the meditation, but also all the wisdom, right? So, so there's so much wisdom and so much for us to know and learn and just be aware of. And so in this time, especially when there's so much going on, you, you, ha you have to think twice, you know, like you have to look at it and say, really, you know, and really check in with yourself about what you believe in and what, you know, what is out there, right? So, yeah. and don't, you know, like somebody's asking about how do I not get engaged with people? Just don't. I don't engage about this stuff with people who just want to fight and argue. I don't engage. It's like, yeah, you know, you, you have fun with that. I'm going to stay in my knowing and, 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 and in my power and my sovereignty, of what I believe in and what is working for me. So you play with that. That's fine. Have fun. Yeah, and just, I mean, we listened to the call because we did, we went over. So I feel like there was, I feel like yeah. we've done our service. We've done a fabulous job. I feel like we offer great service. I feel Absolutely. Like we, I feel like what was meant to be said was said. And um, so I, I do think we covered that. So we listen because you'll get, you know, you always get more out of the second time when you listen. Oh, absolutely. And and please take a look also, at the... No, you know, it's, it is vibrational. So just by tuning in, the energetic vibration of what's been covered starts to integrate into your awareness because that, that's how the new paradigm works. It's not left analytical brains of learning. It's integration of learning and integration of realizing it's within you. You know these things. They've been within you all along and they're just being more activated through vibrational resonance and vibrational harmony. And start to trust your knowing. Start to trust your, you know, your own guidance of what you're getting. You know, don't, don't necessarily just listen to everybody else. Just start to listen to your knowing as well. Because it, 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 like Lori just said, it is, it is within you. And I was gonna say again, just take a look at the membership program because like I said there's so much in there lots of activation lot of lots of meditations lots of classes mini classes full classes lots of wisdom you know so if and you save ever want to know today. Anything, <laughs> yeah save 144 today so yes. if you ever want to know anything trust me it's in there <laughs> you'll find it in there <laughs> yes awesome all right Laura I have another appointment in seven minutes and I gotta so go because I'm like I have to eat I have to sleep I have to do all sorts of stuff and take, take care of the body vehicle. No, All right, right, guys, thank you so, so much for participating. Stay in touch with me. And yeah, I hope you will enjoy the package. I know you will hugely yeah. benefit from it. And thank you for having me, Alara. I love you thank, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. All right. Until next time, Bye -bye. may you continue to be blessed with an abundance of joy, peace, love, happiness, prosperity, radiant health. Sending you all much love and blessings always. Bye for now. <laughs>